and Mbali, we go to shop for year after year. And among the things that stand out typically is how little has changed there, despite the historical significance of that community. You're certainly right. Of course, Ayanda, we do find ourselves in the historic uh, township of Sharpeville. And of course, this is where in 1960, where a number of people in this community uh, protested against uh, those past laws. And of course, uh, because of the protest, which resulted in at least 69 people being killed, uh, anti-racism uh, South Africa is, of course, launching anti-racism week. And of course, they are here to continue to highlight the plight of racism to continue to highlight the plight of issues are still facing many South Africans and also still this community. But just to find out more about this campaign, which is, of course, launching today, we are joined by the Ahmed Katrada Foundation's Nishan Bolton. We are here in Sharpeville, and, of course, we know that this place is known for that all-important or rather historic moment where 69 people were killed and essentially uh, mar uh, marching and protesting against, uh, you know, uh, issues and issues relating to racism at the time because these were passed laws against uh, black people at the time. No, absolutely correct. Um, I think Sharpeville illustrates to us just how, what the consequences of racism are. Racism kills. Um, and, and, and that's really what happened here. And, and we are here because the March 21 is the international day for the elimination of racism. And it would seem not only in, in South Africa, but across the world, we've not learned the lessons about what hatred can do uh, and the consequences thereof. You saw it in, in Germany in 45, um, the Auschwitz concentration camps. You, you see it today in Palestine. You see it in India. Uh, many would argue that you see it in, in, in the kind of warfare that, that exists in many parts of the world, driven by hatred, driven by the wanton need to kill, simply because of, of difference that, that pe and, and the importance that people ascribe to those differences. But we are here because we, we think reconnecting with history is important for young people to learn the lessons of the past so that we, they, they can begin to take forward those lessons to meet the challenges of, of the 21st century. And as you say, one of those big challenges is the continuity of racism, not perhaps in its raw form as, as, as in 1960, but in many other ways, in our schools, workplaces, places of worship, um, across the board. Um, racism is, is still one of the biggest issues in this country that affects the vast majority of people. I understand that you will also be bringing young people to come and commemorate, of course, uh, or mark uh, Racism Week, as uh, we highlighted here in the country. And you speak of these incidents which happened in 1960, and you are still saying that uh, it continues to be a major challenge. I mean, one would even say that we, we now even see it in the likes of social media. It has even grown uh, to those kind of platforms. Social media has certainly given um, racist views um, and, and, and movements a, a, new, a new way of reaching wider audiences. It's also helped them to become more organized, uh, not only here but across the world. And, and you saw the, 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 the destruction, the destructive effects of this uh, in, in the U.S. last year, January, driven primarily by a racist agenda, uh, led by a, 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 a racist president heeding his calls, um, so, so it is, it is a rallying call that many people would, would, still, would, would, would still want to come out to. I think what we've seen in, in places like South Africa is that it can go dormant, uh, it can become invisible, uh, and at particular times will, will, will rear its head, uh, as I think we're beginning to see in different parts of the country today. We bring young people here, and, and we'll be joined by about 200 odd young people who come from youth clubs of the, of the Katrada Foundation in about 25 to 30 communities across Gauteng, precisely because one of, the, one of the big things that we teach these young people is to know the history, to understand that history, and to work towards not repeating the mistakes of that history as, as they move along in their own lives.
All right, thank you very much. Of course, that is Nishan Bolton from the Ahmed Fatrada Foundation. Uh, Ayanda saying that they are, of course, are reconnecting with history, and this is why we find ourselves in this specific location, uh, saying that, of course, when you look at what happened in 1960 with those past laws, of course, those were past laws made to oppress a number of black people in this country, uh, but they will continue to teach even more young people in terms of the challenges of society and South Africa still faces when it comes to racism. And you left us there from Shuffle.